Hello! Ichiru Ino Yashiki is a devoted family man hated by his wife and children. Hiroshi Shigami is a carefree teenager surrounded by the love of his divorced parents. A combination of circumstances leads them to the city park at night, where the pair find themselves in the clutches of an alien civilization that turns them into the perfect robots capable of both saving lives and destroying everything around them. Each of the heroes has his own path, and one day they are destined to meet in a battle to save humanity. The Inu Yashiki family lives in Tokyo and moves into a new house that Ichiro, the caring father, bought. The grumpy mother and ungrateful children look around the dark living room with contempt, cursing their father for making such a choice. Remaining enthusiastic, Ichiro suggests that the family celebrate it with a housewarming party. Ignoring the father, the mother and children unceremoniously leave for the cafe, leaving Ichiro alone. Abandoned by his family, the man is not discouraged and spends his time eating sushi with black caviar and drinking wine. Ichiro has been working diligently for the sake of his family his whole life, listening uncomplainingly to his boss's endless reprimands. One day, returning home after dark, Ichiro discovers an abandoned Shiba Inu on the porch and wants to adopt it, but his wife, appearing behind his back, demands that he chase the dog away. She coldly hands him a letter, from which he unexpectedly learns that he is terminally ill. The next day, the doctor confirms the diagnosis, stage 4 cancer. The smiling doctor asks Ichiro to visit the clinic with his family again. After learning that his life will end in three months, a depressed Ichiro tries to call his loved ones, all of whom ignore his call. After dinner, the man tries to tell his family the terrible news again, but no one will listen to his pathetic babble. The only living being that listens to his worries is his dog Hanaku, whom Ichiro leads out onto the street to kick it out at his wife's request. However, the dog whines and follows him to the city park far away from home. There, the man notices a lonely boy sitting on a bench. Both characters' attention is drawn to a brightly colored celestial body flying right at them at cosmic speed. Ichiro regains consciousness in the early morning. After taking off his broken glasses, the man realizes that he can now see clearly without them. When he returns home for breakfast, he receives squeamish glances and comments from his wife, who thinks her husband has been drinking somewhere all night. <laughs> Saying he doesn't feel too well, Ichiro retires to his room, thinking about his imminent death. The hero notices that he is emitting steam. In panic, Ichiro gropes his body and is horrified to find a mechanism inside him, which after shooting out something, folds back into a normal arm. On the wall, the man sees the scraps of his morning meal. What happens next is even worse. All the mechanisms inside Ichiro are activated, and the frightened man's body reveals its new mechanical contents to him. At this time, Mari, Ichiro's daughter, listens to her teacher's announcement that there will be a field trip to Tokyo Parliament next weekend. Mari's classmate, Hiro Shishigami, goes to visit his gamer friend Nayuki, bringing a new comic book as a gift. Passionate about the game, Nayuki reluctantly converses with his friend, inviting him to feel at home. Hiro, though, persistently calls the boy to the balcony, where he shoots a flying bird with his finger. Oh. Hiro then leads his friend, who is stunned by what he just saw, into an underground parking garage for an even more epic show. By sending signals to the car's electronics, Hiro masterfully manipulates them, causing them to collide and drive around the parking lot on their own. Afterwards, he shows Nayuki his full technical power. A confused Ichiro shows up at work in the morning and is reprimanded by his boss. Unable to tolerate the elderly employee's slip-ups, the boss decides to fire the old man. Ichiro begs to be allowed to work until he retires, but gets only contemptuous looks in return, and humbly leaves the office, wandering aimlessly down the street. On the curb of the sidewalk, he finds a creature just as crushed by life as he is. He picks up the bird and suddenly sees it as if through an x-ray scanner. With a touch of his hands, he heals the pigeon's fractured spine, and it immediately soars into the air full of strength. Frozen in place with delight, Ichiro hears a distant, wailing cry. His search leads him to a hospital, where a desperate woman begs the doctor to cure her gravely ill son. Having infiltrated the patient's room, Ichiro scans him, discovers a problem in his brain, and saves the kid from certain death in a matter of seconds. However, he fails to sneak away unnoticed, and is caught performing the miracle by the doctor and the patient's mother. In the meantime, Mari discusses college options with her classmates. She complains that her father will not be able to pay for her education. <laughs> Hiro and Nayuki, who is perpetually bullied by the other guys, shows up in class. Using his inhuman strength, Hiro stands up for his friend and forces the leader of the gang to apologize and stop his vicious pranks forever. Upon seeing this, Shion Watanabe, a shy classmate, 
walks up to the boy in the hallway. The girl confesses her longtime love for Hiro. He responds with a welcoming smile, but walks away. In the evening, Hiro goes to dinner with his father, who has left his mother. The man's new spouse serves a magnificent dinner, and the half-brother and sister compete over who gets to spend more time with Hiro. Watching his father's family idol, Hiro raises his concealed weapon over them, but does not dare act out his plan. Instead, on his way back, the boy walks into the home of a random family, planning to ruthlessly massacre them all one by one. Ichiro Inuyashiki, meanwhile, is visiting hospitals and using his powers for good when a cry for help reaches his sharp ears. The sound leads him to the house where Shishigami is executing his victims. Recognizing the perpetrator as the guy from the park, Ichiro also receives a bullet from the boy, but it does him no harm. The next day, Shishigami uses his ability to infiltrate electronic devices and services to steal an impressive sum from the bank. He offers the cash to his friend, Nayuki. However, the guy already suspects Hiro of the murders, which have been broadcast on the news the entire day. Fearing for his life, he nonetheless hesitantly declares to Hiro that their friendship is over. Upon returning home, Shishigami discovers that his mother has been deliberately fostering the boy's relationship with his father so that Hiro would move in with him. The woman tells him that she has been sick with cancer for a long time and doctors cannot save her. Shocked by this news, the boy rushes into her arms and promises to never leave her. Upon returning home, Ichiro finds himself in the middle of a family conflict. Takeshi, his son, steals money and his daughter Mari refuses to apply to college. The family blames the father, calling him a laughingstock who can't protect them. Overwhelmed by what happened, Ichiro weeps at night, cursing and calling himself a loser. At this time, Nayuki's pleas reach him. The boy asks God to stop his murderous friend. The man decides to join the fight against the criminal and taking his only friend, Hanukkah, with him, soars into the sky and sets off for the park at Nayuki's call. The guy tells the old man his theory. That night, both Inuyashiki and Shishigami died in a celestial body collision, and someone must have transplanted their memories into mechanical bodies that function identically to each other. So Nayuki trains the old man by recalling the tricks Hiro showed him. Meanwhile, Shishigami's family learns the test results. All cancer cells in Yuko Shishigami's body are gone. The happy mother and son are walking down the street and contemplating their future lives when they are surrounded by men in black that accuse Hiro of killing the family. The boy rushes off and manages to escape. Shishigami's classmates are filling out forms for the field trip to the Tokyo Parliament Building when the news broadcasts about the charges brought against Hiro. The only one who can't believe it is the love-struck Shion. Hiro shows up at the house where she lives with her grandmother. Inuyashiki continues his strenuous training. Overheating mechanisms makes him thirsty, but after drinking bottled water, the man feels ill, and his body spews the drink back out. The partners realize that the mechanisms inside do not digest salt. Hiro goes into hiding at Shion's house, but his mother is hounded by reporters and accused of raising a murderer. <laughs> In the next news bulletin, it's announced that Yuko Shishigami has committed suicide. After hearing this, Hiro decides to declare war on Japan and first destroy those who wrote vicious comments about his mother online. After killing 26 people, the boy confesses to Shion, who woke up recently, that he is indeed the wanted murderer. After locating Shishigami's hideout, an assault squad silently sneaks into Shion's apartment in the morning. Seeing the target, the squad opens fire, intending to eliminate the boy. After dealing with the intruders, Hiro discovers that Shion and her grandmother are dead. On the morning news, the news anchor reports on the horrible bloodshed that Hiro had caused. A worried Inuyashiki watches the report with his family. The man asks his wife and children to stay home and not to use electronic devices, but as usual, is met with neglect. <laughs> Inuyashiki's fears are justified, and Hiro goes live on Japan's main news channel. He declares his intention to wipe out the entire population of the country and immediately begins to carry out his plan infiltrating all available electronic devices and shooting innocent civilians. Ichiro immediately learns of the mass killings and sets out to find Shishigami, prudently taking a bottle of water with him. The news of the murders reaches Hiro's classmates. A couple of them stare at their smartphone screens, enabling the madman to put a bullet in their heads. After that, the broadcast suddenly stops and Nayuki appears on the screens, urging everyone that hears him to get rid of their internet-enabled devices. Hiro, on the other hand, realizes that someone similar to him is doing the broadcast. In order to continue the mass execution, Shishigami starts bombarding the city with missiles. Another volley is interrupted by Inuyashiki, who appears behind the boy. The man demands that he stop, and Hiro offers to take his side. Unable to come to an agreement, the opponents engage in a battle that, beginning with the firefight, continues in the skies above Tokyo. While breaking away from his mad pursuer, 
Inu Yashiki hears his daughter Mari's plea for help and calculates her location. The girl is in the Tokyo Parliament building that was destroyed by a missile strike. However, his attempts to go to Mari's aid fails. Shishigami damages one of his turbines, and the opponents fly down together, destroying everything in their path. Landing on the roof of a building, Inu Yashiki again tries to reason with the villain, who is only arrogantly drinking water. The old man shoots his bottle, so the dexterous criminal steals the life-saving liquid from the man and attacks Inu Yashiki with renewed vigor. But he does not give up either. The man soars swiftly into the sky, taking Shishigami straight into the stratosphere. By firing a volley of missiles, Hiro manages to stop Ichiro, grabbing him by the throat. The guy is about to blow his head off with a cannon, but to his surprise, a jet of water bursts out of it. The bottle taken from the old man had mineral water and salt in it, which disabled the machinery. Inu Yashiki strikes one last blow at his weakened opponent. After dealing with the killer, Ichiro rushes to Mari's aid. He desperately massages her heart, but his attempts are in vain. Devastated, the man gives up. When Mari suddenly draws in a barely audible breath, the father has managed to save his daughter's life. Previously embittered at him, the girl now hugs her old man tenderly. Their happy reunion is interrupted by Shishigami, who has risen from the dead. He shoots the survivors on the floor one by one. Exhausted, Ino Yashiki fails to stop him, and defenseless Mari also gets shot, though not fatally. Her father, who had rushed to her aid, is smashed by Hiro's powerful blows, one of which shatters his head, and its mechanical contents appear before Mari's eyes. The assassin, meanwhile, picks up a heavy iron bar to crush Ino Yashiki's head. One blow after another, he strikes his crushed opponent in front of Mari, who nevertheless tries to reach for her father's hand. Noticing the girl's indifference to her father's inhumanity, Hiro stops. He grabs Mari and lifts the girl over a deadly height, intending to throw her down in front of her father. Ichiro is unable to even stand up and simply begs the villain to stop, thereby claiming victory over his opponent. Shishigami throws Mari down. Sincere fatherly feelings help Ino Yashiki gather his last strength. Accelerating his mechanisms in a second, he lunges ferociously at Hiro, intending to wipe him off the face of the earth. With a single desperate blow, he turns Shishigami into scrap metal and immediately lunges down in the hope of saving Mari, who is already approaching the ground. Inu Yashiki only has mere seconds before the inevitable happens. After making sure Mari is alright, Inu Yashiki soars into the sky and sets out to save other lives. As always, you can find the title of the movie in the description of the video. And let me know in the comments whether you think Ichiro's family deserved his unconditional love. Could their relationship have worked out without supernatural intervention? And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next awesome retelling.